can bring the jury. about your upbringing and if you would start in high school. I went to high school in uh, New Jersey and graduated. Um, and then I did a little work at a restaurant um, in Banquet House. And then at the same time I started college, but uh, that really didn't work out for me, I guess. Uh, so I joined the military. Tell me about your family. What, uh, when you say you grew up in New Jersey, uh, tell us maybe go back before that. So uh, I lived with my parents, and uh, they got divorced when I was young. That's your dad, your mom. Yes, they're here. And uh, so I went with my mom. When I think I was 10 years old, maybe. So I went with my mom to, uh, to Texas. Stayed there for a little bit, um, and then I went to live with my dad in New Jersey. I went to high school there, and, uh, and that's when I ended up joining the military. Well, in high school, did you have, were you involved in outside activity? I was, and in high school, we had a, a, TV, a TV station, TV station in the school. So we did a, a morning show. Um, the TV was in each classroom. And uh, you know the kids would come on and say the morning announcements, and then also. What was your role in that? I, I worked in the back. I worked with editing, and and the cameras. And did you work outside of? Did you have any activities outside of uh, the academic environment? Did you did you work? I did. I worked at a restaurant, and I also volunteered at the EMS. Emergency medical services. Yes. And, and that was county or city or what? It was. It was the city. And uh, did you do any boating? I did. Uh, we had a boat. Well, my dad had a boat, uh, probably all through middle school and high school. So I was on the boat all the time. Worked on the boat. So when you uh, tried tried out in college, you decided uh, what branch of the service did you? Uh, did you go in? I enlisted in the Coast Guard. Now, in the Coast Guard, uh, how long were you uh, serving in the Coast Guard? Six years. And during your tenure in the Coast Guard, what type of uh, jobs did you have? What was your, did they have an MOS? Yes, uh, in the Coast Guard, there's only 11 jobs. 
Wow. What is it? Eleven. So you have your main job, and everybody has collateral duties. So I was at a station in Florida, and I had a handful of collateral duties. Do you anything in law enforcement? I did. I did. I was a boarding team member. Uh, I'm sorry, a boarding team member. I was also on the uh, customs uh, joint task force in the port there. And did you uh, have any uh, captain's mass or disciplinary, disciplinary problems? Uh, did, did you have any issues while you were in the Coast Guard? No issues, no problems. What type of discharge did you receive? Honorable. And that was after? Six years. Six years. And what did you do after you? Uh, were you married at this time? Were you, were you no, I, I wasn't married at the time. Um, when I was getting out of the Coast Guard, I had a buddy who lived in North Charleston, and he was telling me that North Charleston Police Department was hiring at the same time I was getting out. So I thought to myself, oh, I'll move to South Carolina, and I did. How old were you uh, when you came to South Carolina? Uh, I think I was six years ago. I was 29. And were you married at that time? I was not. And did you, uh, were you accepted by the North Charleston Police Department? Yes, I was. And what did you do uh, when you were accepted? When I was accepted, we went to a, a three-week uh, pre-academy at the department. And that basically means that we go to the range one time and fire and uh, qualify on a firearm. Um, and then we had to get OC'd with OC pepper spray, but I didn't have to do that because I did it in the military. And basically we sat in a room and we went over the legal material before we went to the academy. And how long were you in the academy? It was nine weeks. And we've heard a little bit about the academy, uh, academic training, physical training, whatnot. Yes. Uh, physical requirements? Yes, we had to do an obstacle course when we, when we got there. And since you took that obstacle course, what in your career as a law enforcement officer, what uh, physical uh, training or obstacle courses have you had since? None. And uh, you've heard the testimony this week, I don't want to be repetitive, but you, you, a lot of classroom work, a lot of firing range work. What about tasers? What did they tell you in uh, criminal justice account about tasers? Nothing. What do you mean enough? The Criminal Justice Academy doesn't teach about tasers. And where did you learn about tasers? At North Charleston Police Department. And after you, you I'm assuming you graduated? I did, I graduated. And uh, you weren't set back at all uh, for repeating classes or anything like that? No, I passed all my classes. And when you got to North Charleston, what type of uh, capacity did you serve in then? After I graduated from the academy, I went to FTO training. All right. If you'd speak up and don't use uh, initials, because we don't know what that means. You okay. went to what type of training? I was assigned to a field training officer. That basically means it's a, a veteran police officer on the department who I work with, and he teaches me how to be a police officer on the street. And when you came to court today, did you bring some notes to refresh your memory of the different activities that you participated in? I did. Why don't we take a look at the daily observation reports. I don't want you to read from them, but you're entitled to look at them to refresh your memory to tell the jury uh, the type of uh, uh, reports that were written up about you during your field uh, training. Okay. The field activity reports were daily, is that correct? Yes. Well, let's look at uh, March 24th and tell uh, the jury what your officer wrote up about you. I don't, I don't have that one. All right, uh, well, let's go to April 13th. I 
I don't have. I don't have Are you name. looking at your field training? Yes, right. sir. This is April thirteenth of what year? Twenty ten. Your Honor, I would object to this entire line of questioning. I mean, basically, what he's doing is having him read what somebody else wrote about. It. They don't put that person on fire. What I've asked him to do is to refresh his memory from these activities that occurred years ago by looking at those reports if he needed to refresh his memory but not to testify from them. He's not reading from the reports. He's testifying refresh recollection of what he did on those days. As to what he did or as to what someone said about him? What he did. What he now, did he didn't that. write these reports, I agree, but the, these are notes of his activities on those dates, which could refresh his memory of what he did. What he did on the circuit. Yes. I, I overrule the objection. May I see your reference, please? So on that day, I was with my field training officer, and uh, we got out with a couple individuals walking in the street. Um, at that time, we made contact with them, and uh, they were arrested due to the fact of carrying a concealed weapon and having narcotics on them. And on April 13th, what did you do that day? Uh, that day, I was with my field training officer, and we were driving around in Union Heights. I observed a, a gentleman riding a bicycle um, in and out of cars on the wrong side of the street, and we went to make contact with him, and he ran away. Um, at that time, I chased um, and detained the subject, and upon a search, he had a whole bunch of narcotics in his pocket. Well, on those, at, on those dates, was uh, anybody hurt? No, sir. On April 22nd of 2010, refresh your memory is what you did that day. Um, at that time, I was uh, with another officer on day shift. I'm going to have to object relevance, you're not going to be. This is all very interesting. We're going to have to deal with the issues before this. Response, Mr. Savage. Well, relevance is to, uh, as I understand relevance, it's. Uh, uh, evidence that will help the jury make the determination in the case and the fact that he was a uh, rookie uh, engaged in a number of uh, foot chases and uh, detentions and arrests in high crime neighborhoods without any uh, violence perpetrated uh, I think is important for the jury to know. Mm -hmm. so, once again, Your Honor, I mean, it's all, it's all well and good, and, and we were acknowledging that Officer Slager never killed him on April 4th, but it has nothing to do with his behavior on April 4th, 2015. I sustained the objection. During the uh, time period in which you were uh, under a field training officer, did you have a variety uh, of experiences in detaining, arresting, people who are armed and dangerous, narcotics dealers, and that sort of thing. Yes. And that's all reflected in the, objection. Reflect in the report that the solicitor has had for 18 months. Yes, sir. And uh, certainly these are public records that the solicitor or anyone else could get and read to learn about your background. Yes, sir. And, uh... Your Honor, I made an objection on relevance. My objection on relevance is continuing on, and, and I just don't see how this no. has anything to do with issues before this court. I, I rule on a question-by-question question basis. Uh, do you, is there an objection to a the last question or the next question? I'm objection, objecting to the entire line of questioning. Question. Yeah. 
think this has anything to do with the issues before this court? I, I, I rule on a question by question basis. I'll move on, Your Honor. Yes, sir. There's been a lot of talk by the solicitor uh, in their questioning of witnesses about your use of force. Yes. And uh, have you ever had an instance of use of force in which you have uh, been reprimanded or sanctioned or in any way uh, uh, charged with any abusive authority or violation of procedure? No. Well, let's go through each and every one so you can tell the jury uh, what you did, starting with the first use of force report. Do you have those reports in front of you? I do, sir. And you can take a look at them and you can tell us the date, if you will, and you can tell us what the issue was that caused you to use force. Yes. So the, the first date is what, sir? 6-7-2010. Uh, and uh, what, is, uh, what would the suspect do uh, uh, that caused you to use force and what type of force was it? Uh, this is a, uh, a traffic stop. Um, the subject uh, stated that he had a gun under the front seat and he uh, refused to get out of the car with that loaded gun under the front seat. And what type of force was employed? Uh, at that time, I, I used my taser. I presented my taser, and then he complied. And uh, you said it was compliance? Yes, sir. On uh, the, the next event, when did that take place? April 20th, 2011. And what was the circumstance of that use of force? That use of force was another officer um, located a stolen vehicle. At that time, uh, he wanted another unit to help him do a traffic stop on the car. At that time, the vehicle fled and a chase happened. Um, we went into the Ackerby neighborhood. As the, the car is driving down the road, the driver and the passenger both jump out of the moving vehicle and proceed to run into the neighborhood. If, uh, the driver runs under a house and tries to hide. Um, and then I chase after the passenger who also ran. Um, at that time, the passenger would not, would not stop, would not comply, and a taser was, was used. And did the uh, suspect then comply with your directives? Yes. What is the third use of force? Uh, the third one is dated June 20th, 2011. Uh, if I remember correctly, that incident, uh, a gentleman was parked his moped in front of the door of a gas station, convenience store, um, on the sidewalk. And I went to make contact with him and tell him to move his moped to the parking spot. At that time, uh, he proceeded to, to flee the area to drive away, um, and then he proceeded to run a stop sign at the corner of, uh, I think it's Harvey and South Allen, that area, Dorchester Whalen. Um, and then I initiated a traffic stop. He did not comply. He continued to elude, and uh, a car chase ensued. And uh, he went across the street, um, oncoming traffic, uh, no, no, no regard for anyone. Um, and then he came to a wooded field where he jumped off the moped and ran into the woods towards the uh, CSX railroad property. Um, at that time, he gave chase commands to stop. He refused, and a, a taser was used. Uh, without further incident? Correct. He acted in compliance. I'm sorry? He was in compliance. Yes, after the taser was used. Ed, uh, the next incident, please, in July of 2011. Uh, July of 27, I'm sorry, July 22nd of 2011. Uh, myself and Sergeant Gee were patrolling Chicora, Cherokee. Uh, we were at the corner of, sorry, Ottawa and Carver, and we observed a male subject walking around with exposing himself in front of other neighbors. 
we made contact and uh, he proceeded to flee and a, a taser was used and he was arrested for indecent exposure. Any further incident as a result of that? No. Uh, the next one please, November of 2012. November 2012. That's going to be one where we were at a bar uh, due to the fact of multiple shootings, and violent crimes. Uh, the whole team had to go to this bar when they closed. One of the vehicles left the parking lot and ran into another car. Um, we followed and I made contact with the driver at his house. Uh, at that time, it was him and his brother there. And he did not want to talk to me. Uh, he proceeded to be very boisterous and loud. Uh, then he proceeded to throw his wallet at me and run on foot. Um, at that time, uh, I gave chase and a taser was used. And then we were on the ground trying to handcuff him. A fight happened and he proceeded to grab my taser. Um, at that time, luckily another officer got there right at that instant, so no more force was used uh, except for handcuffing the individual. Any repercussions in a further incident as a result of that? No. Suspect acted in compliance? After he was handcuffed, yes. And, and by the way, in each and every one of these instances, are these signed off by your superiors? Uh, yes, they are. So your sergeant, Lieutenant, the captain, and the chief, and the deputy chief. Correct. Uh, in June of 2013, when you were involved in another incident. Uh, yes, I was. Uh, this one happened in, actually in front of an officer's home. Uh, the individual was uh, breaking into vehicles, and the officer came home and located him in hiding in his driveway. Um, at that time, I assisted the officer, and we took him to the ground with an armbar takedown, and he was detained. And uh, he, how was the uh, taser utilized in that situation? If I remember correctly, it was a drive stun. And any further repercussions? No. On July 17th of 2013, uh, tell us what happened that day. I'm sorry, July 17th, 2013? Correct. Um, that was the one where, if I can recollect my memory. We received a call to a home, reference to a six foot three, 280 pound man, intoxicated causing a problem in his mother's home, uh, arrived on scene, and we told him that he needed to leave due to his mother's request. Um, at that time, he was becoming more and more upset, and then he proceeded to punch his girlfriend in the face, and she flew across the room. And at that time, I utilized my taser to take him into custody. And at that time, did he comply? Yes. The next incident, please. Yes, that was going to be on uh, 8-31-2013. This one, we responded to a call at an apartment complex where a female was inside and her boyfriend was trying to kick in the door. Um, at that time, we arrived on scene, and as we were coming on scene, we were notified by dispatch that the subject was still on scene, so we turned our headlights off and we parked down the street so he wouldn't see us coming. Um, at that time, we arrived on scene and he continued the kick in the door, trying to, I guess, get her. Um, at that time, we told him to come down. Um, he was very upset and then he proceeded to fight officers, fight me. Um, a taser was used and two other officers were on scene also and he was taken into custody. And how was the taser employed at that time? Um, at that time, it was, I'm sorry, I didn't use the taser. 
another officer used a taser, and that was uh, with the probes. And so why is there a use of force report uh, in your file when you didn't use the taser? Because I was on scene. So if you have 20 officers on scene for use of force, every officer is in that report. Uh, on September 15th of 2013, what happened? October 31st, 2013? I had September 15th. Am I wrong? I, I don't have that one, sir. All right. What is the next one you have? Uh, let's see. No. This one is, I'm sorry, it is September 15th. I read the wrong date. We got a call to a residence in Union Heights in reference to a man who broke into a home and tried to rape a woman. Um, at that time, uh, myself and another officer figured out who the gentleman was. Uh, we went to his house, and uh, when he opened the door, he was very sweaty, and he stated he had just woken up from a dead sleep. Um, they had the same name, and we wanted to talk to him. At that time, the individual became belligerent and proceeded to slam the door in our faces. Um, at that time, we, we tried to restrain the subject, and uh, he proceeded to fight us. Um, at that time, a, a, taser, a taser was used uh, to, to uh, put the gentleman in custody. Did it affect compliance? Yes, it did. Now, in all these uh, reports we've been reading, uh, these were when you were working in the south area? Yes. And your shift at that time was what hours? It was 10 p.m. to 8 a.m. So uh, all these incidents were in the early morning hours? Yes. What about in December, uh, December 22nd of 2013? This one happened at 5.22 in the morning. And um, another officer got out with a subject who was intoxicated. Um, at that time, the officer was going to take the person into custody, and he resisted, grabbing onto a car. At that time, the subject turned around and bear-hugged the officer and tried to grab his equipment on his belt. At that time, I used a taser due to the fact that this gentleman was assaulting the other officer. Uh, the gentleman that uh, was how tall and what did he weigh? Um, Six foot three, two hundred forty-five pounds. Yes, sir. Six foot three, two hundred forty-five pounds. And on February the twenty-fifth of twenty fourteen, I uh, re, re, I uh, was dispatched to a, a domestic violence call. What time was that? That was at three fifty-two in the morning. <laughs> it, it was in Union Heights, and when we arrived on scene. Um, the daughter met us at the door and stated that her mom was being beat up by the boyfriend. As I went through the house into the bedroom, I observed the female laying on the bed on her back and the male was on top of her, choking her, and told her that you better not tell police what I'm doing. Um, at that time, he was taken into custody without any kind of issue. And then when we got to the vehicle, he refused to get into the vehicle. He was handcuffed and refused to get into the vehicle. Um, at that time, after telling him and instructing him multiple times by myself and the sergeant on scene, we decided to use a taser in the drive stun mode to drive stun him, drive stun him in the pelvic bowl area, which is the stomach region, so he would sort of bend down and proceed into the vehicle. And it's the only way we could have got him into the car. Uh, after that, he complied. On May 4th of 2014, um, on, on this incident here, it was at 10.44 p.m. 
and we responded to a call where a roommate would not let another roommate inside the inside their house. I guess they were having some kind of argument. I don't recall that. Um, as we arrived, we were outside, and we can hear the roommate inside stating, if I recollect my mind here, um, saying that, "Are you ready for this?" To that effect. As he, when he opened the door, he didn't see the police and proceeded to punch the roommate in the face, and the roommate fell to the ground. Um, at that time, we were told him on, he was under arrest, and we had to use our taser to effect an arrest. Did he comply at that time? He did. And on May 4th of 2014? On that date, Officer Clement, uh, another officer, uh, it was at 3.33 in the morning, conducted a traffic stop on a subject. Um, at that time, he called for backup and I arrived on scene. And the officer wanted to get the subject out of the vehicle to do an arrest. And the subject ran away. Um, at that time, he ran across Rivers Avenue into a field. And uh, I'm pretty sure, uh, uh, if I, uh, I think uh, he was not listening to what officers were saying and continued to run. And uh, I, uh, I used my department issued taser, taser um, but it missed the subject. And then I followed up with a drive stun, and then he was in compliance, and he was handcuffed. And on May 27th of 2014. Uh, this is somewhat the same incident as the last one. Um, the subject was uh, in a vehicle and a traffic stop was conducted for speeding and he also ran from the vehicle and uh, he was not complying with officer's request and he was tased and taken into custody. So uh, the, the one on uh, May 4th, what, when you say speeding, what, what type of speeds are you talking about? Let's see on May 4th. I'm sorry, on May 4th, it was no turn signal, and on May 27th, it was speeding. And what type of speeds are you talking about? Uh, he, the officer who initiated the traffic stop said he was going at a high rate of speed through the, through the neighborhood. 100 miles an hour? Could have been, yes. And uh, did we do August 8th of 2014? Yeah, on August 8th of 2014, um, I responded to a gas station at 519 in the morning to assist another officer who was conducting a traffic stop in the parking lot. Um, at that time, uh, they were ran through the computer and they had warrants. Um, the person resisted, did not comply, tried to run away, and a taser was used to effect the arrest. The suspect was in compliance. Correct. And on August 25th of 2014? Yes, on August 25th, 2014, another officer conducted a traffic stop on a vehicle. Uh, when that officer conducted a traffic stop, he realized that the license was suspended and he called for another unit. Uh, I arrived on scene and another officer arrived on scene. At that time, the officer walked up to the vehicle and told the subject to get out of the vehicle that you're under arrest. The officer told the subject eight to ten times that he was under arrest for driving under suspension and the subject would not comply. He stated no and he would not get out of his vehicle. Um, at that time, myself and the two other officers opened the door proceeded to get him out of the car. We had to pull, physically pull him out of the car because he was resisting after he was told he was under arrest. When he was in the car, he, reached, he leaned over to the passenger side and proceeded to grab a bat, a bat or a club. Um, at that time, we yanked him out of the car because he was grabbing that weapon. And if I remember correctly, the other officer on scene used, grab, pulled his firearm out due to the fact that this individual was grabbing a bat. Um, as we pulled him out of the vehicle, you know, we had to pull him out pretty, pretty strong. I mean, he was grabbing a bat. We didn't know what he was going to do with the bat. So we, we yanked him out of the car. Um, and then he was on the ground. Um, at that time, the officers 
are telling him to put his hands behind his back, to just give him commands. He's refusing. He's continuing to put his hands underneath his stomach in his waistband area. And at that time, I used my taser due to the fact of everything that led up to that incident. And then he was taken into custody. He was compliant at that time? He was. In a situation like that, is that recorded on a video? Yes, that incident was recorded on two, two car videos from two different locations. And uh, those could be ugly situations. Yes. But this was investigated? It was. And there were four officers present? There was three officers and then a sergeant arrived on scene. And uh, you were cleared from any wrongdoing? I was. Have you ever been put on the early warning system? Not to my knowledge, no. Well, you'd know if you were, wouldn't you? Uh, yes, I would have. And uh, have you ever been reprimanded in any way as a result of your use of force? No. And have those uses uh, of force been investigated uh, in preparation for this case uh, by outside uh, law enforcement agencies? Yes. And have you been reprimanded or in any way uh, told you did something wrong? No. The last uh, use of force that we talked about was on August 25th of 2014. That's approximately six months before this incident. What changed in your career status at that time? Or about that time? Uh, my wife becoming pregnant. And as a result of her pregnancy, uh, what changed in your <coughs> work hours and shift your location? Um, honestly, uh, my wife sort of nagged me a little bit to go to a normal schedule. So. Uh, Is this your wife? Yes. And uh, I guess I forgot to ask, when did you get married? We got married September 2010, September 28, 2010. And as a result of that, have you uh, accepted financial and emotional responsibility for the children of a previous marriage? Yes. How old are they now? They are 13 and 15. And as a result of your marriage, did you have uh, plans uh, to have a family? Yes. In addition to those two children? Yes. Tell us about that. Um, I've always wanted a son or a daughter. So due to some medical issues, we had to do IVF. Pardon me? It's uh, in, in vitro fertilization due to some medical conditions. So we had to go to a doctor, um, take out a loan, and they, they basically make the baby. It worked? It worked. The first time, it did not work. And we had to do it for the second time. It worked a second time. And uh, I assume that the uh, birth of, is it a son? Yes. Is it, was it a joyous occasion and you attended? No, I did not attend. Why not? I was in jail. Why? I was in jail. For this case? Yes, sir. Do you have a copy of the court of defendants 101, 100, and 102? Let me give you these copies. And ask you if you recognize these documents. I do, yes. Do you 
in the course of the work, you, uh, have you received uh, letters from people you've arrested? I have, yes. Uh, have you received letters from the chief of police? Yes, I have. Have you received letters from Ms. Wilson's office? Yes, I have. I sustain the objection. So, uh, without telling us the details of, of that, uh, have you heard back from a woman you arrested? I did. And you've heard from the chief of police? Yes. And you've heard from the solicitor's office? Yes. Without going into details regarding your excellence in police work. Yes. With respect to uh, taser training, and I want to say four one. But is Sergeant was it Sergeant Gee a yep. trainer? Yes, he trained me one time, yes. If you would step down with specificity the type of training that you received at North Charleston Police Department regarding the use of the taser that this jury has occurred. Uh, we had training where an officer had his a rubber firearm in his holster and then another officer had a taser in his hand to drive some motion. And the officer with the taser would have it on his side down straight like this in his hand and down. We were a certain amount of distance away. That was more certain. More than 27 inches? Yes, sir. Maybe a little bit more. Give or take about that area. And what we had to do is the officer had to pull his rubber gun out and say bang before the officer used a live taser to hit the officer to hit the officer with a firearm. Now, we haven't heard about this before. Who is the sergeant, the instructor? Sergeant. And who is the partner that you were dealing with in this? My purchase. And tell us what happened. So, when the sergeant used say go, Mr. Savage would bring his hand up and run towards me with the taser on, put me, and try to get me with it. As soon as it went, I had to pull the rubber gun out and say bang at the same time. So whoever the object was to shoot before I got tased, and it didn't work. The bulk of times where he was let go, by the time I pulled my gun out, it was only coming up to this, and it was already deep with me, and he was tased. And did you actually get hit with the tased? A couple times. 
And you drive stuff? Yes. And what happens to your lip? I'm flying, pointing this way, I don't know where it went. Pain shoots on my arm all down here. I was sad that I don't do. Reverse roles. Now you got uh, you supervising who is the officer? The officer being my prison. And so Bridges now has the uh, weapon and you have the taser? Correct. Same result? Correct. Same result. Why are you down here? I'm not going to ask you to take over your shoes. Tell us about the pen trip. Stay in front of the jury and show them the pen trip. So, have you seen before? This is the shirt stay. This is closed loop. You can go around your foot. This metal will go around your shirt. Little grommet here. So, your shirt will be between. Lock it in. And what I did is I used a penny and you stick it between the shirt and the black and the back of the rubber garment like so. And that prevents this rubber garment from coming down at all. So your shirt cannot come loose. I was hired in 2009. And when did you actually uh, begin policing? Is that when you started begin uh, actually doing policing, or is that when you were uh, uh, with a field training officer, or what? Yeah, with North Charleston, uh, when you get into your field training officer, when you're riding with him, that's when you actually start. Okay, so that was in when of 2009? That was in 2010. Okay. And, um, of course, as part of it, being a law enforcement officer, you have an oath, don't you? Yes. And you took an oath, correct? Correct. And that oath requires you, among other things, to safeguard lives and property. Yes. To never abuse your authority. Correct. And to never employ unnecessary force. Correct. And as a police officer, you're also governed by a code of ethics, are you not? Yes. And these are things that basically, you know, if you swear to God on the code of ethics you signed, correct? Correct. And it's very similar in its contents, correct? I think so, yes. And according to your code of ethics, the fundamental duty of the police officer is to safeguard lives and property. Yes. To respect the constitutional rights of all to liberty, equality, and justice. Yes. To develop self-restraint and be constantly mindful of the welfare of others. Correct. To be honest in thought and deed in both your personal and official life. Yes. To be exemplary in obeying the law and the regulations of your department. Yes. To enforce the law, never employing unnecessary force or violence. Correct. And that you alone are responsible for your own standard of professional performance. If that's what it says, yes. And would you agree with that, that you alone are responsible for your own standard of professional performance? Yes, everyone is. 
And as you stated in your direct testimony, um, you've had quite a bit of training, is that correct? And not just starting with North Charleston Police Department. Mm -hmm. Your training began when you were in the Coast Guard, correct? Correct. <clears throat> and in the Coast Guard, you were trained in the use of force. Yes. You were trained in defensive tactics level one through four. Yes. You were trained in arrest techniques. I was. You were trained in handcuffing. Yes. You were trained in weapons retention. Yes. And you won the pistol marksman ribbon. Uh, yes, I did. Which means you're a pretty good shot. Uh, if you say so, yes. I don't guess they give you that if you're not a good shot, do they? No, you know, you, you, you practice. And since going with um, the North Charleston Police Department in 2000, 2010, when you really started, I guess, um, you have training there every year, correct? Yes, we have three days of training every year. And it's called, I believe, has been referred to, to throughout this trial as Ames training. Correct. And that's annual in-service <coughs> mandatory training, correct? Yes. Um, and with AIMS training, you've been involved in active shooter training twice. One time. I believe in 2013 and the end of 2014, according to your training law. I only remember one time. <clears throat> Okay, and uh, would you agree with what's been testified in there that those are kind of shoot, don't shoot type of scenarios? Some of them are, yes. Uh, you've been trained in cardiopulmonary <coughs> resuscitation and first aid in 2011, 2013, 2015. No, I'm not CPR certified. The North Charles Police Department does not certify officers in CPR. I didn't say that you were certified. I see it says you received training in CPR first aid and first aid as part of your AIMS training in 2011, 2013, and 2015. First aid, yes. And uh, during high school, you worked as a volunteer EMT. I did. And uh, about 16 hours a week for three to four years. Correct. <laughs> no, that's not correct. I'm sorry. I think it's about two years. Okay. Um, you have received training as a police officer in defense, defensive tactics. Yes. Uh, pepper spray. Yes. Practical problems. Yes. Firearms training every year. No, firearms qualification every year. Firearms, well, firearms qualification every year then, correct? Correct. Use of force. Correct. Use of deadly force. Correct. <clears throat> Legal updates every year. Yes. Taser training every year. Yes. And specific courses on the use of force in addition to the use of force you get with your various other weapons training. Okay. You were instructed on North Charleston's use of force policy. Correct. And in fact had to certify that you were familiar with the use of force policy every year as part of your AIMS training, correct? I think so, yes.
Ladies and gentlemen, I'm happy to go to the jury room for a few minutes. Please do not discuss the case. Five minutes or so. 